and there was really no rules at that time. So it's like, you, you know, you could get away with doing that kind of stuff. And then afterwards I was like, nah, this is actually, this is actually a thing that it requires a lot of rules and it requires a lot of like, uh, you know, as far as composition and stuff like that. And what you know, was the, the way you come, points for you? The, well, I worked with Tim Lehigh probably. Yeah. Because seeing all the work that he was doing and seeing the minute he came to San Francisco, he started just crushing it with like all these really big pieces. And that was, that, that, that kind of solidified that it's like, okay, this is, this is a style. And, and this style, because I've always been, you know, I mean, that, the Japanese style fits my personality more because the subject matter is shit that I really like. I've always been into, you know, uh, nerdy, uh, you know, Conan and, and fucking warriors and all this kind of fantasy stuff. So the Japanese uh, mythology fits completely into that, you know, as far as uh, subject matter wise. Yeah. Do you uh, do you ever miss that? Um, I mean, you tattoo pretty much custom stuff, you know, on the regular. Do you ever miss that like real street shop um, where you're just uh, client oh, here right. today, client gone today type of thing? I will. Yeah, I'll do. I'll, I'll work at street shops and, and, you know, just do whatever is necessary if I'm traveling or something. I don't like to do that here because, you know, there's other people. I those type of situations I just give to somebody else, you know, because it's like it, it's not worth my frustration to deal with this person because every every person is kind of going through their own uh, learning process. And if I think a client's going to be difficult, I'll give them to one of my guys because it's like they need that kind of practice more than I do because I, I've dealt with every kind of fucking shitty client. And I don't need – like the last thing I need, if if I agree to like – if I'm just on my – you know, like I, I have some time freed up and, and some lady wants like some silly little tattoo, you know, I don't really have the time to just go through that whole process with her of – breaking her in and like convincing her what's better. You know, I'll let one of the guys do that. That's it's, you know, I've, I've passed that point. Right. I heard a story that, and you can confirm or deny this, but I heard a story when you were working in San Francisco, once a guy tried to walk out of the shop and having not paid you and you, uh, you put a whooping on him. Um, I used to hear stories about Troy Denning and jujitsu when I worked <laughs> in San Francisco at picture machine. That, I never actually I've never actually beat anybody up in the shop or, but I've definitely had, there was a couple, the San Francisco, there was more than one event of that happening where you'd have, you'd have to, but I'd see people, I'd see people out that had stiffed me, you know, and had to handle it there because like, listen, cause you know, they're cool. They're cool scene guys, you know? So I'd see the, I was like, Hey motherfucker, you know, you said you're going to come back, you know, so give me that money right now. How much money you got on you? You know, that kind of thing. Um, you know, I, you, you, San Francisco was a it was a really interesting place at that time. What, you know, it was like kind was of. A, this is in the nineties. This is a, I'm from I'm from the area, but uh, the Hayward, I, right? San, Hayward, Oakland area. My dad lived in Oakland. My mom lived in Hayward. Um, but that that's all the same. It's just like one big long street that connects everything. So it's not. It's like the same. It's same city basically. In Oakland, there's like more black people, and in Hayward at that time, it's just bikers and Mexicans. You know, so this was like when growing up in the seventies, super, super industrial, super, very, uh, blue collar, you know, environment. Um, and well, yeah, when I started, when I started, uh, I started jujitsu in the early, the early nineties, right when it first came to America. Right. So I was actually one of, uh, Hal Gracie's probably like his first 50 students in the Bay area. And, uh, so so yeah, and and nobody was into it then. Like I was a freak. Everybody was like, "What is this weird shit you're into?" Like, "Oh, Troy, you're so fucking weird." What is all this? And so now, and it's funny because like now it's like a default location for any guys in their 30s that want to get in shape that have tattoos. They're like, "Well, yeah, of course I'm gonna do jujitsu." You know, that's of course. And it's like, motherfucker, where were you when I needed a training partner? I was like all, all alone by myself. It was like me and two other guys in the whole city that trained. So yeah, it's almost never just jujitsu anymore. It's always MMA. Like MM, some sort of MMA training, which you know people say whatever they want about that. Like I think personally, I think the whole MMA craze has kind of killed jujitsu a lot because it's made it less pure. It's made it less fun. Because now you're you're instead of like a bunch of guys that are really trying to learn jujitsu, you have a bunch of people that just kind of fancy themselves fighters. You know, like they 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 like the idea of thinking of themselves as a fighter. So everything they do, they're like, well, what if uh, you know what you know what, what you know they'll they'll be like, well, in this position, the guy can totally punch you in the face. It's like that's not really what we're talking about right now. You know, we're talking about doing this technique that works 
you know, that yeah. and and not a, and not like you conceiving of yourself in, in a pair of shorts with fucking with the patches all over them in the <laughs> octagon. You know, do what you're fucking do what you're supposed to be doing here now. You know, so yeah. What's your uh, pure jujitsu? Do you do you prefer the gi or the no gi? I think they're both super cool. Depends I mean, I think they're. They're they're both well the the gi is fucking completely is the game is so much more complicated and it's so much slower and it's so much more based on the te- te- technical things. Uh, but when the no gi like if you have like a basic wrestling ability, you can f- survive fairly well and you can snap out of uh, you can just like spaz out and get out of uh, get out of techniques and stuff a lot way easier than with the gi. But uh, you know I, I think they're both cool. I think. Just regular jujitsu is super noble, and people, you know, people will say like, "Oh, it's not." People over with any kind of like a self defense martial art type of thing, they're not realistic with themselves because they, you know, you, you they're like, "Oh man, you know that ju- you know jujitsu is fucking you know it's cool, but like you never end up in that position. You can never get an armbar on some guy on the street." And it's like, you know what, man? Are you fighting every day on the street? You know, like, are you really like? It's 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 an it's an activity that's super fun that makes you a tougher person, and that's basically all you can ask of any you know martial art or anything. It's recreational. It's a lot of fun, and by putting yourself in bad situations where you're getting you know you have guys trying to fucking kill you all the time, that makes you that makes your survivability a lot more probable than if you were to just like be like, I don't know. I would just like crush this guy's throat really quick. And it's all this like conceptual shit, you know, it's like, no, I mean, do something that where you're testing your, you're testing your, your, uh, your stamina and your ability to be down and then come back from a bad situation. And, uh, that will help you, you know, that will do more to help you survive in any kind of street situation because it's completely unpredictable. Nobody ever knows what's happening. The smartest thing you can do for any kind of fighting situation is not, not let it happen, you know, stay away from it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, anybody that thinks like you, you, you get in, you get in a fight on the street, man, you lose just by being in the fight because you're fucking, even if you kick the guy's ass, your, your hands are going to be all fucked up. You're going to hurt yourself some, some way or go to jail. So it's fucking stupid. It, you know, but, but, you know, you still deal with people like that at the academy because they're like, they feel like they're, they're going to turn themselves into like some fucking street vigilante or something like, well, what if this happens? What if this happens? It's like, just relax, just tr- train hard at what you're being taught and just do that. Yeah. Work on your core muscles, man. Let's yeah, uh, sure. tur- <laughs> turtle up, you know, and, and learn how to run. Yeah, exactly. Fast. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I would not consider myself a jujitsu guy uh, anymore. I did train, um, I trained with Caesar Gracie for about a year out. And in- that's, that's what sorry, I started with Caesar. Yeah, man, it was uh, it was fun. I and, did it. Uh, in what city? In Pleasant. It was uh, like Pleasant Hill. Yeah, or? No, yeah, on Alhambra Boulevard. That's the one that I went to. That yeah. was his. Uh, wait, it was in. Well, no, his was the one. It was. I went to his initial one, and then I think they moved into a way larger location afterwards. Because the one that I trained when I when Half Gracie was still with him, mm-hmm. we trained at the one that was. It was. Uh, it was just one room with no showers or anything like that. Yeah, this one was a. Uh, this one was in yeah Pleasant Hill or Pleasanton, right like, there by Concord. And, close. Uh, Con- yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was. Uh, I did that for for about a year, and then throughout the years, I've done different different stuff, shoot fighting, and um, I did some no gi stuff, and I actually got to train my. Here's my claim to fame, dude. I got tapped out by uh, Eddie Bravo five different ways, <laughs> very nice. quickly, um, and uh, got to roll down there at Legends, which was super fun. Um, I really dig that that whole no gi system for legends, it's interesting. Which not it's, the it's, one and not legends in Jose. No legends in because uh, there's a. I, it was legends in L.A. There the, was a okay because uh, there was a that on the mat on the mat magazine uh, the website they had a school called Legends for a while. I think B.J. Penn was training there and stuff uh, like that. Like this was in the the. They're like early two thousands. Yeah, yeah. No, this. So, is anyways, like, yeah, you know, yeah. Okay. Cool. it's it's fun, man. I, you know what, what I dug about. To say that again. I said it's a cool way for a man to spend your time. It's, you know, you stay in shape. You you keep your head in the fight game. It's good. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I think? Uh, what I like about it is it is one of those things that is not only, you know, you're being taxed mentally and physically at the same time, and that's. 
that's something you don't, you know, you're not going to just probably get on the, you're not going to get that on the treadmill, you know, I don't think. I feel, well, yeah, I personally feel it's much better to, like, the way you look at your training, you're, be, you're, you're better off just constantly being and defending yourself. Because that makes you a tougher person. If you're fucking just, if you're just training with white belts and you're just tapping everybody, you're not manifesting any kind of real skills. You know, what I mean, you're not you're not really doing anything to your character. You know, you need to be always putting yourself in a situation where you're, you know, you're on the bottom and like you're trying to get get out of this bad situation. You know, always like I, when I, you know, I never had a problem being t- tapped or anything like that. I don't have that kind of ego because everything is different. And it's like, just because a guy taps you in jujitsu doesn't mean if you guys had some argument that you couldn't handle it, you know, it's a completely different situation. And so I don't get, I don't get like all emotionally involved like that, you know? But, uh, so, um, do you still train? Huh? I I got a bad knee. I blew out my, I have a ruptured, I have a ruptured hamstring blown out ACL. And, uh, the, the, my knee, like, uh, one of the, the tendons that holds my kneecap in is like lacerated. So until that is all rehabbed, um, I, you know, I can, I can do, I'm going to start training again. So where I can go in and just do drills and no going live. Cause every time I go live, it's, you know, I'll make it half the day and then my knee will pop. So I have to just, make sure that's super strong, but then just get back in the Academy and con- continue to do, uh, just drills and then keep the, keep the techniques, you know, keep in my mind. Keep it tight. Where did the, yeah, keep- where did the love of bikes come from? Motorcycles? Where do they come from? Yeah. Where, where did you, where I'll were you introduced to that? My interest in motorcycles. Um, I've been riding my whole life. I mean, I've always loved, I've always loved motorcycles. Um, you know, and then once I've always loved bikes when I, when I was a teenager, I was really all the st- all the shit the guys are into now, like all the retro choppers and stuff like that. The sixties, sixties survivor look. Um, me and my friends were all into that stuff in in the eighties. Like we were really into that stuff when the the, the consensus of the the motorcycle scene, as far as like Harley Davidson uh, riders was concerned, they were into just ugly, but like kind of like a like a less tough version of like the club bikes now, you know, with the fairing and, but just really overdone and really not, not cool at all. You know, like they'd have like FXRs with like tiny little short shocks on it, uh, chop front end and kind of, you know, just like a, like an old man show bike looking type of thing. I wasn't into that at all, but I've always loved, like, even when I had a, you know, like I had a, like, you know, old vintage bikes, I would always still have like a Japanese, like a KZ 1000 or something just for like, getting shit done, you know, like the shit when you need to run errands and stuff, like I would always keep that, you know, on board because you can't, you know, a fucking 1968 fucking chopper, like you can't rely on that if you have to really have some business, right. you know.